A question I get asked a lot is what should go in a spine portfolio? Well, lucky for you, I review a lot of animation portfolios at my day job, and I also hire animators for my own projects from time to time, so I know just what people are looking for when they look up portfolios. Some of the things I'm looking for actually apply to any portfolio, and then there's spine-specific things that I look for, and then also just general human things. So I'll talk about each of these in a few sections. First, let's talk about things that apply to any portfolio. Make sure that you have consistent quality in your work and make sure it's your best work. You don't wanna add a bunch of old work as filler just for the sake of a larger portfolio. This could actually hurt your chances. It confuses the portfolio reviewer and then we're not sure if you're gonna consistently be a good fit. Honestly, I'd rather see a smaller portfolio of amazing work than a larger portfolio of work that's hit or miss. And if you really don't have enough stuff to fill out a portfolio, make a new piece. It doesn't always have to be work that's from a job. Otherwise, really, just don't add anything that doesn't represent what you can do. Show a good variety of animations relevant to the job that you're applying to. This means do your research. If you're applying to a slots game, for example, make sure that you're showing slots animations. If the game requires a lot of character movement, standing, action, and facial animation, add those things in. Just because you can animate one way doesn't mean that you can for another. So research the company ahead of time to see what they do. You don't want to apply to a company that does a lot of realistic combat games with a portfolio full of stylized children's videos. Although the most important part is going to be your animation skills, the way you present these are going to have an effect as well. So keep the reel two minutes or less. A skilled animator doesn't need a lot of time to get an idea of what you can do, assuming you're showing your best work. You can use the time cleverly with interesting edits or showing different stages of an animation, but make sure it's easy to understand. While it can seem like a good idea to pack a bunch of things onto the screen to show more stuff, it can make it really hard to know what to look at and what you wanna show off. Timing is also a huge part of presentation. Make sure a piece is on screen long enough for the viewer to understand what's happening, but not so long that it feels like it drags on and the viewer gets bored. Use the time in your reel intentionally. That includes the title card and artist information too. Most of the time, you'll have all this information in your resume or application, so it doesn't need to take up a lot of time in your reel. Now let's move on to some spine-specific tips. Well, really, it's just one tip. Show off how well you can use Spine as a program. Animation skills are transferable between programs because no matter what program you use, the animation principles still apply. So if you're making a Spine-specific reel, show off how well you know how to use Spine as a program. A good way to do this is by showing your rigs along with the animations. You can export your animations with different rigging elements visible and show off your bones and meshes. You could even do a screen capture of you showing cool features of the rig. Showing off your rig tells me whether or not you know how to optimize your work for games, which is extremely important. If there are a lot of unnecessary bones and vertices in your meshes, it tells me that you might still be newer. Which, by the way, isn't always a deal breaker. The nice thing is spine can be taught pretty quickly. Animation skills, on the other hand, take a long time. Other cool things you could add to show that you really know how to use spine are things like skinning, facial rigs, using different constraints, and 2.5D. But a big note that I have for you, don't rely on physics. You can show off that you know how to use them, but make sure that you're also showing that you know how to go without them. You don't want to use physics as a crutch for not learning how to animate secondary action properly. Now let's move on to some general human tips. First off, just don't be a butt. <laughs> if you aren't getting a response, it's okay to check in, but make sure that you're being nice about it. Most of the time, studios are just busy and it slips their mind or they get so many applications that they can't possibly respond to all of them. I honestly don't care how good a portfolio is. If I feel like the person applying is going to be hard to work with, I'm not going to hire them. Enthusiasm and openness to learning is also a very valuable trait. If I don't feel like I'll be able to give you constructive feedback without you taking offense or fighting me on it, then I won't want to work with you either. 
Don't get me wrong, there are some very stinky directors out there who deliver feedback very badly. And if you feel like you're being bullied by your director, definitely find a way out of that situation or find someone that you can talk to that you can trust. Because that's never okay. But in the end, the role of a director is to make sure that the project is meeting the vision of the client. It's not trying to bring you down, it's just to be a second pair of eyes. A couple of other extra tips that I could give you too. Make sure that your audio is good, but don't make music the focal point of your reel. It can be fun to have the animations and music fit together, but also keep in mind that some people just turn off the music anyway, especially if the audio is loud and blaring and really annoying. And then make sure that the art that you're animating also looks good. Really, it shouldn't matter so much since you probably won't be making the art yourself, and what should really matter is that your animations and rigs look good, but subconsciously it's going to matter. So make sure that you're using good quality art. There's lots of places you can use to get good stuff. I like to use Canva. In fact, that's where this character came from, along with all the other art in my bootcamp. Today is the last day to sign up before our first call tomorrow morning. So if you know you want to learn Spine directly from me and build the skills for your own excellent portfolio, check out the details in the description. Anyway, I hope that helps. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!